In this first lesson for measurement in grade 11, we are going to have a look at calculating the surface area for all the figures that you've learned up to grade 10. To determine the surface area of a three-dimensional figure, the area of each side of that figure should be calculated and they should all then be added up. This means that you actually fold open the three-dimensional figure into a net and then determine the area of each part and add it up. For this, you need the area formulas for all the two-dimensional figures. Or you can also choose to study the specific formula for each three-dimensional figure on their own. Here we have the six two-dimensional figures that you need to know the area formulas of. The three on the left are the well-known rectangle, triangle and circle. And even though the parallelogram, kite and trapezium are not seen that often, you also need to know their formulas. When we move back to our surface area of three-dimensional figures, I'm going to mention once again that you can simply determine the area of each side of the figure and then add them up or you can choose to use these general formulas. So for any prism as well as the cylinder, the surface area can be determined by taking two times the area of the base plus the circumference of the base multiplied by the height. And this height is the distance between the two bases. If we have a look at the surface area of a pyramid, it will always be the area of the base plus the area of each triangle. In the sketch we have a square pyramid, which means we will have four triangles that we need to determine the area of and add to get the total surface area. But if it's a triangular pyramid, the base is also a triangle, and then we have three triangles on the sides that need to be added. In a pyramid, it is then important to be able to identify all the different heights. Firstly, we have the height of the pyramid, and this is the height that is measured from the middle of the base straight to the apex, that is the height of the pyramid. Next, we have the perpendicular height of each of the triangular sides of the pyramid, and these heights are measured from the base of the triangle. This height is then called the slant height. And finally, if it is a triangular pyramid, the base triangle also has a perpendicular height, and this height is used to determine the area of the base triangle. When it comes to a cone and a sphere's surface area, we do not have flat surfaces anymore, but now we have curved surfaces. A whole lot of mathematical calculations go into determining the area of these curved surfaces. Luckily, you do not have to do all those calculations. All you need to do is know these two formulas by heart. Just like in the pyramid, the cone has a slant height that you will need when doing these calculations. And when we move on to the volume of a cone, you will also need the height of the cone. Here we have a summary of each figure's individual surface area formula. You can choose to know all these formulas by heart and then simply substitute when calculating the surface area. Then, however, you need to be able to adapt each formula according to how the figure is adapted. For example, if you have a cylinder that is open at the top, you need to realize that the 2 pi r squared represents the two base circles. That means you will have to change this to only one base circle because the top is now open. So for a cylinder you need to know which part of the equation represents the two circles and which part represents the rectangle that is folded around. For the square pyramid, the B squared calculates the area of the square base and the rest of the formula represents the four triangles that you need to add. Similarly, in the triangular pyramid, 
The first part of the formula represents the base triangle and the second part will then be for the three side triangles. For the cone, the first part is the base, which is a circle, and the second part of the formula is for the curved part folding around that circle. And for the sphere, you are always going to use the complete formula unless they ask you to determine the surface area of a hemisphere or a semisphere. For the hemisphere, you are simply going to take half of the sphere's area and then if it is a closed hemisphere, you will have to add another circle, which is pi r squared, for the bottom. Let's go and have a look at a few examples. Example 1. A building consists of a rectangular prism with a roof that is formed by a square pyramid. The length of each side of the base is 12 meters. The height of the prism is 16 meters and the perpendicular height of the pyramid is 8 meters. The building is open on the inside, so there is no ceiling separating the walls and the roof. Calculate the surface area of the building. When calculating the surface area, I'm going to start off with the rectangular prism. This rectangular prism has five sides because it is open at the top. And of these five sides, four of them are exactly the same size. Here, the front side, as well as the back, the left and the right, all have dimensions of 16 by 12. The bottom is a 12 by 12 square. So I'm going to start off my calculations for the surface area, saying that I have four sides with a length and a breadth of 16 and 12, and then another side that is a 12 by 12 square. Next, we move on to our pyramid, and in our pyramid, we have four triangles that are exactly the same size. To calculate the area of the triangles, however, we need the base, which we have as 12, and the perpendicular height of the triangles, which we do not have yet. For this, you need to realize that there is a 90 degree triangle inside this pyramid, of which we want to calculate the hypotenuse, which we're going to call the slant height, and we're going to do that with Pythagoras. We already have the one side of this triangle as 8 meters, and to determine the second side of the triangle, we are going to accept that because this is a right pyramid, and we know that the length of this pyramid square is 12, the side will be exactly half that, which is 6 meters. According to the theorem of Pythagoras, this hypotenuse or slant height is then calculated by taking the square of the other two sides and then adding them up and taking the square root of that. This slant height is then 10 meters. At our total surface area, we can then go and add our four triangles in the pyramid. And for a triangle, the area is a half multiplied by the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. And here the base of each triangle is 12. And we just calculated the perpendicular height as 10. Once we now go and add up all these areas, the total surface area will be 1,152 meters squared. Example 2. Calculate the surface area of the figure shown on the side. The radius of the hemisphere is 11 centimeters. This figure consists of a hemisphere, or half a sphere, and a cone. Earlier I already mentioned that for a hemisphere, we simply take the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared, and we halve that. That means we will have 2 pi r squared. The complete formula for the surface area of a cone is pi r squared plus pi times radius times slant height. But because this cone is on top of the hemisphere, the circle part is not there, therefore we exclude that in the formula.
Let's now focus on our cone where we still need the slant height distance. We already know that the radius of this hemisphere is 11, which means that the radius downwards is also 11 centimeters. From this, we can then determine that using the 26 centimeters, the height of the cone will be 15 centimeters, so that in the end, the 15 along with the 11 has a total length of 26 centimeters. Now, using our 15 centimeters and 11 centimeters using Pythagoras, we can determine the slant height. So, similar to example one, we take the square of the two other sides and add them up, and then take the square root of that value. But this time the value is 346, which is not a perfect square number, so we keep it in the root form so that we can work more accurately. So when substituting into our surface area, we will have simplified 2 pi multiplied with the radius squared, and we add pi multiplied with the radius again, multiplied with this slant height, which I keep in third form. This will give us a surface area of 1,403,07 centimeters squared. From these two examples, you can see that it is important to know each formula, but also understand how to be able to adapt the formula according to the figure given. Then you will be able to calculate all the different sides and add them up.